Amen. Hey, so we're going to do something a little bit different on the day. We're going to have our pastors talk on the day. I'm absolutely Woo! excited. Amen. All right. Hey, so I spoke this morning in Thorsby. I'm going to get it right for you. It's Thorsby, right? Um, but it is over by Jimmy. And so one of the things that I talked about on this morning was God is not satisfied with where you are. God is not satisfied with where you are. One of the things he says in the Bible all the time is he wants to take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. God oftentimes all throughout the Bible asks a person, what can I do for you? Implying that that is another level that God wants to get you to. He often asks people, do you want to be healed? Signifying that there was another level of healing that he wanted you to tap into. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God says, my plans are to prosper you and not to harm you. That's a continuation so God always desires for us to get better. He's not satisfied with where you are. How many of you, let me ask you a question. How many of you just ever just had a hard time praying? I'm like, I mean, like, like, it's just hard to pray sometimes. For whatever reason it is, uh, just by a show of hands, can we just be very transparent on this morning? Just by a show of hands, have you ever been in a situation or a time where you just find it hard to pray? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah. Just because you are in that hard situation, that's the very reason we should pray, amen? Hey, so listen, we're going to talk about that on this morning. Why is it so hard to pray? Why do we have difficulty praying? But the great thing about it, we're not just going to bring up that problem and solution. We're going to give you some solutions to it as well. Is that fair? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Why is it so hard to pray sometimes? <laughs> so I started this on um, my podcast uh, this week. Um, and I was, I was telling Pastor Derek I was only able to get through one point. Because so many times it's like you know you need to be praying. You know you need to be covering your family, your kids, and, and whatever it is you got going on. And uh, the reason it, I was telling Pastor, I said, I said, I've had like three or four people come up to me and say, Pastor Trish, I have just been a, having a hard time getting in prayer. Like focusing and just having that intimacy with God like I normally have. Like it has just been so hard. And it's like, why is that? And then I began to expound and share and help them understand the keys to really tapping in and having a good prayer life with God so that your 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 prayers enter into the throne room, right? And so the first reason... Hey, let, me, let me say this before mm -hmm. we get started. Hey, so I want to say this. I want to throw this disclaimer out there. Some of us may have a, a, a good prayer life. And I often say this. Wherever you are in your prayer life, wherever you are, wherever you are in your prayer life, make it better. Make it better. Because it can always be better. Whatever you are in your prayer life, make it better. Yeah, there's always another level. And so one of the, the first reasons that I, I we were going to talk about this morning is our flesh is weak. Right? So y'all taking notes, y'all write it down. Why is it so hard to, like sometimes you just feel like you're just talking. And then it's not really intimate. It's not really uh, uh, next level. It's just, I'm just talking. It's like I'm just saying something. One of the reasons why is our flesh is weak. And we go to Matthew 26 and 41. Uh, the NIV version of this says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. So there are times where you're trying to pray and you fall asleep, just like the disciples did. God was like, you know, listen, I know that you know you need to pray, but why is it that you are falling asleep? Why is it that when you pray, watch this, your thoughts are everywhere? Why is it that you're not in the inner court, in that most holy place with God of prayer. 
and, and I was sharing, I said, one of the first things that I do before I start praying is like the tabernacle. Y'all know the tabernacle, right? You have the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. So where we're trying to go in our prayer life is the most holy place. Why? Because that's where God is. But you got to understand is that before you can get into the most holy place, you got to deal with your flesh. How do you deal with your flesh? I say, God, I need you to cleanse my mind, cleanse my heart, and renew the right spirit within me. So before I get into that, where I'm trying to go is that most holy place in God, there first has to be a cleansing of my mind. Because my mind will go everywhere but where it needs to go, and that's intimacy with God. And so you got to ask yourself, how many times that when you go into prayer that you ask, the first thing you say, God, deal with my mind. Don't let it interfere with what I want to happen between me and you in this moment. You have to deal with your flesh. When, when you're not, when you're falling asleep, when your mind is everywhere, you, that means that you're not intimate with God. Let me tell y'all something. When we come to God, what the point is, is that we're trying to establish intimacy with him. We're trying to commune with him, meaning commune mean we got to have communication. I talk, you talk, I listen. But if my heart and my mind is filled with so much stuff, you have to take the time to declutter the stuff. And you know, that's, that's really important too because I, um, I think it boils back to uh, relationship. And so, uh, you know, that's why he said in John, uh, 14 and 15 he says you love me you'll keep my commandments so there's a there has to be a relationship there and that's what righteousness means righteousness simply means being in the right standing with God and so before I can go to God and ask him like in the natural like if you was like not saying God is mad at us but if there's been a disconnect uh, for whatever reason we have to get it right before uh, anything else happens and so I have to be on the right in the right standing with God one of the things I always do is you know um, I always ask, ask God for forgiveness or, or for my sins I know he has forgiven me uh, for my sins but that's one of the things I always do I, I need to make sure that's right you know if anything I've done known or unknown said or unsaid even my thought even those thoughts so we have to make sure that that we're in the right standing with him because God values relationship over religion. Religion says we can just go do it and because that's what we're supposed to do and all those things. And that's the right thing. And so a lot of times we work out. That's why religion frustrates you. And so and so because if I'm just working off religion, religion says that you can go do this because this is what you're supposed to do. And so when that happens, a lot of times our efforts don't line up with this God yeah. that we are praying to. And so that causes a frustration. And God, again, values relationship over religion. When you pray, does your thought, do your thoughts go everywhere? Anybody in here have unstable thoughts in prayer? Just one, two. Okay, now we're being real. Okay, now we go. So now what we have to do, that's a part of your flesh. Let me tell you something. When we talk about your flesh is weak, your flesh goes back to your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your intellect, and it pertains to your body. So that means that your mind is weak in those moments. So what do you do in those moments? You have to ask God to take away thoughts that are interfering with the intimacy that you desire to have. So now if I find myself thinking about what I got to do tomorrow, who said what they said yesterday, you know, all of this stuff, I said, God, redirect my thoughts. Redirect my focus so that I can concentrate and have the intimate moment that I need to have with you right now. Because guess what? It's not about what you got to do tomorrow. It's not about what happened yesterday. It's about what's happening with you and God now. Amen. Right? So God cannot move if your flesh is weak. That's that you're still in the outer court. 
and you're not going in into a deeper realm with God. And God wants intimacy. He does not want you babbling. Again, how many times do you take a minute to quiet your thoughts so that you can hear God? Because you know that communication, like prayer is just communication with God. So after you talk, do you take a minute to steal your, your mind and your mouth so that God can prophetically speak back to you? So this is what you have to do in controlling your flesh and you don't know how to stop talking when, when you're having prayer. I challenge people to, to, to put a timer on. Start out with 30 seconds to a minute. When you put on a 30 second to a minute timer, see if you can sit still and just say, Lord, your servant is listening. And see if God will speak to you in that 30 seconds to a minute. Now, when God speaks to, your, to you, your flesh is still, and he may speak to, how will he speak? Through a vision, a word, he'll give you a scenario. There's so many ways that God can show you something in that time period. But we got to learn to control our flesh so we can be still, not just talk, but listen. Yeah. So number two, our faith is weary. And that comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 24. You guys know the story. Yes, this man, he was asking God for something. And, and, um, and the question was asking, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. So it's like, you know, we go into prayer, we're praying about something, but we got a little bit of doubt that, like, that thing is really not going to happen. And so, uh, James, in the book of James, it talks about uh, being an unstable person. Any man that asks God and does not believe or has doubt, it says he's unstable. He's like a wave tossed to and fro. And so uh, when we, we go into prayer, we, we really have to believe uh, that God is going to answer those prayers and cancel out any any doubt, any disbelief, and anything that may hinder God from moving on our behalf. So that's just saying our faith is weary for number two. Like, like, let me tell you something. When we talk about our faith is weary, what we're talking about, when we talk about faith, we're talking about the thing that you're believing God for, Right? The thing that you're believing God for, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. So when we say our faith is weary, you're saying that the thing that I've been hoping for the most hasn't manifested, and I'm frustrated. Mm. And, 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 and I don't feel like praying because the thing that I've been praying for for so long has not manifested. So, so now I'm weary and I'm not praying like I should because it's taking too long. And, and, and there is a part in us that, all, that will probably, if you're at that level, there's a part of you that has disbelief. And the man that said, God, heal my daughter, he was like, you know, it's your faith. He was like, you don't have faith. He was like, but I do. He's like, I, I got faith, but help me with the part that, that has to doubt the insecurity. And, you know, y'all heard our testimony with trying to have kids. We believe because we got prophetic words, we got visions, we had all of this stuff happen. But for eight years, it never manifested. So I had to find myself saying, well, God, I believe, but help me with the unbelief because the unbelief could be the manifestation of something that, that knocks what you're believing for out of the way. For us, Okay, if you say we're going to get pregnant, why does miscarriage keep happening? So miscarriage has brought some kind of doubt, a weariness in us. If God said we're going to bless you with financial increase, but then you lose your job. So now there's weariness. The loss of the job just not gave you weariness for the faith of the increase. And it's like, okay, God, how do I get past that? You have to tell God, God, I believe but just like the scripture just said, help me with the part that doesn't. Help me with the part that gets frustrated when it doesn't happen after years of praying. Help me with that part. Because I know that you can do it. I've read about it. I've seen you do it in, in my family, my friends, and people on TV. I know that you can do it. 
but for me in my house, something is missing, so I need some, I need you to help me with that part in me, right? So, so your faith is weary, and you gotta acknowledge the fact that you, you, you're weary right now, and you're frustrated. I think sometimes we think that uh, being weary or being challenged or worried, sometimes we think that that uh, that's not. That's almost like not being a Christian sometimes. But the reality is that we're all going to experience that. And I think those are those part times we really have to be vulnerable and transparent with God because God cannot heal what we try and conceal. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make that known unto God as well. Like, God, I'm, I'm asking you for this. I'm believing you for this. And then again, it's that, that piece of me, Lord God. And most of the time, that happened because of our experience that we had with something or our inexperience because we never have experienced that thing. Mm. Wow, that's good. The third way is it's hard for us to pray because our pattern is wrong. Mm. What is our pattern? Mm. Matthew 6 and 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Sometimes we approach prayer with the wrong pattern. We spend so much time uh, saying the same thing over and over and over again that we forget that God gave us the pattern of how we are supposed to pray. So it, it, we said, Father, uh, I just need, bless us with this, I need that, da, da, da. You, The pattern that God gave us, is it, it talks about how we have to acknowledge the Father. Our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your prayer should start out with a worship unto the Father. Because prayer is not about you. See, this is where we get it twisted. We go into prayer with an ulterior motive all about me and my house. But prayer is really about God. So we have to come to prayer with a pattern of honoring the Father. We have to seek his face and not his hand. Because when we begin to seek his face, his hand follows. But a lot of times our pattern is, I need the hand, and if you show me your face, that's okay. Right? So we have to go into prayer seeking the face of God and not the hand of God. And we have to understand that the hand follows. And so it's hard for us to get out. That's why sometimes if you find yourself in church and you see people worshiping, that's because they're seeking the face, right? It's not about the hand, the miracle, the sign of the wonder. People go into a level of worship, whether it's a praise team or whether it's people that come to the altar and they just fall out and cry. They're seeking the face of God. And in that, a sign happens, a miracle happens, a wonder happens. And so we got to make sure that we check our pattern of how we're praying. And, and in that pattern, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. How many times you go into prayer and say, God, your will be done for my life. If it's not your will for this to manifest, God, don't do it. I repent for asking. But a lot of times, we're not seeking the will. We're seeking the hand. And that's important because, you know, that, and he, as he teaches us how to pray the model prayer in Matthew 6, we know that's a model prayer to pray the Jesus prayer. It's in John 17. But in the model prayer, he taught us that. He, he taught us to pray that thy kingdom come. Again, like he said, thy kingdom come. Like God, for God's will to be done and not necessarily ours and so as we begin to pray in that manner um that's when i truly believe that matthew 6 33 comes to life and it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and all these things will sh shall be added unto us so it's almost like it's almost like the, an exchange when we we seek him he puts our needs first as well yeah yeah, so and, and I'm gonna say something about that and, and, and it says, you know, talk about uh, babbling. Uh, we think a lot of times we may think a lot of times that wrong God God likes or he's always answer long prayers. 
that's not the case either. I think, I, you know, as you look at scripture, one of the po most powerful prayers ever was two words that Peter prayed in Matthew, uh, Matthew 14, 30, when he was, when, when he says he's walking on water and, and he begins to drown and sink. And what did he say? What was his prayer? Help me. Help, Help me. I can guarantee you of each and every one of us really jammed up, really jammed up. You, you, Ain't, ain't no long prayers going on. It's, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And so uh, even if, if, if it's just that sometimes, and as we begin to, I truly believe that as we begin to spend more time with God, become more intimate with God, God will expand our prayer language. You know, he will, he will make it stronger. And so, uh, and so because sometimes I, I get, I just know like years ago when I really began to pray, like I didn't know how to pray. And I'm like, man, well, I don't sound like such and such. And I don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like yeah. God the exactly. Father and all these stuff. And I got to go salute Abraham and Isaac <laughs> and Jacob to the third power and all these. Like, I, Lord, I don't, I don't know all of that. But here's the deal. God created language. So God understands Ebonics and all kind of stuff. And so I think it's one of those to where you simply really have to go to God as you are. Because God understands it. And if it's help me, if it's Lord, I don't know how to pray. Teach me how to pray. That's a start. That's a prayer. Lord, teach me how to pray is a prayer. And so if it's just that, you got to start somewhere. And just add one more thing in that. In the pattern, in the pattern that God gave us, he also... He said, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. In the pattern, you should always be asking that, to, that God helps you to forgive people so that he can forgive you. Because <laughs> that is a salvation issue, right? right. That's why we was talking about this the other day, like, 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 um, um, like when people hurt come against you, talk about the back, fight, stab you, da, da, da. and I said, they were like, how you get good? I said, I leave myself no other choice but to love. Why? Because that's a salvation issue. That's a salvation issue. If we are who we say we are, we have to always forgive. I don't care if they killed our best friend. We have to always forgive and love. Why? Because that's God. God said, how can I forgive you when you can't even for, forgive them? And so in your prayer time, you should always be, and now I'm not saying you can't be distraught over somebody and broken and bitter in moments. You can have moments of bitterness, but you can't let bitterness have you, okay? So, so what you have to always pray in your pattern is, God, help me to forgive daddy. Help me to forgive mama. Help me to forgive cousin, brother, sister, now. Whomever came against me, help me to forgive anybody from my past, present, and my future. Your pattern should include, as the pattern prayer, help me to forgive so that you can forgive me. Amen. Amen. And, that, and, that, and that's real good. And I think, you know, a lot of times we talk about forgiveness. That doesn't mean that we forget what people did. And the, and the difference in forgetting and forgiveness is forgiveness says, I choose to, I don't forget what you did, but, but going forward, I'm not going to judge you based off what you did. Mm -hmm. That's a true forgiveness. Now, I, don't, I, I didn't forget it because some things we're not going to forget because it left something there. But going forward, I do choose not to judge you or deal with you based off what you did going forward. Because that's true forgiveness with us. That's how God deals with us. Mm -hmm. Like, based on what we did, when you become a child of God, mm -hmm. when you become a child of God, based off what you did, going forward, he doesn't judge us off those things. Yeah, yeah. That's good. The fourth way is, four reason, the fourth reason why we're so, why it's hard for us to get into prayer is we're, we're so distracted by things situations or people that we can't focus on God, right? We got so much going on that we we can't focus on God. When we try to focus, it's like I, we just everywhere. We can't. Here's the scripture in Luke 10, 38 through 42 in the NIV. It says, and Jesus and his disciples were on their way. 
He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was, what's the key word? Distracted by all the preparations that she that have to be made. And she came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So in this situation, Jesus was in their presence, right? Just like God. God is in the presence, but I can't enter in to him because this house ain't clean. The kids running crazy. Ain't God at your house? Y'all say, right? Y'all got to say how so? So God is in your house, right? Let's make it plain. You say, that means you got the presence of God in your house. God is in your house. But when it's time for you to sit at his feet, get in the word, read the word, or is the word reading you? Get in the word, pray, talk to him about a few things, listen for his voice. You can't do it in your house because the kids running crazy, the house ain't clean, in an hour I got to be out the door, uh, we got to have this, I'm mad with my husband because he didn't do that, and, we, and then she didn't do this, and so we got, it's a lot, we can't focus in the house. Jesus was in the house, and 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 he's in your house. He's in my house. But it's funny that we can't find time to sit at his feet because we give him Netflix more time than Jesus. We give him all these other things more time than Jesus. We so busy. Uh, Keisha was at the thing last night. She talked about this uh, at the at the women's thing, and she did a hashtag. YouTube preoccupied. Hashtag YouTube preoccupied. That you can't sit at his feet. That you can't enter in. That you can't do what you need to do. Because guess what? Something else has taken priority over the God that's in your house. The God that's in your heart. The God that gave you everything that you have. You have allowed something else to prioritize itself over him. And then when you do go to him, you give him crumbs. I got two minutes. Let me tell Jesus what I want. Call him up and tell him what you want. And then after that two minutes up, are we done? Amen. But Mary spent time while he, she know he's in her house. You know he's in your house. Mary had time. And Pastor Derrick was the same. He was like, I'm going to tell him how to have focused time, focused prayer. Yeah. Mary made time for Jesus because she knew he was in her house. Yeah. And, and it, it may, now, now uh, granted, it may be moments where you, there are some quicker moments than others. So, so don't take that out of whack because uh, there will be those times. Um, but I, it, it, it definitely boils down to uh, uh, your heart, you know, um, uh, is my heart really into this or my heart really into uh, praying and giving God that time? Because there will be moments where there are some times where they will be a little bit quicker. Uh, one of the things that um, I like to do is like not just prayer, but focus prayer, like focus prayer. And I get this from um, Mark 1 and 35. I didn't, I didn't, uh, we didn't talk about this before. Mark 1 35, um, it talks about Jesus. It says before daybreak. Now that's I know that's that's me. Dark thirty. Everybody, everybody, Dark thirty. Everybody not there. That's just me. That's me. Uh -huh. uh, but um, it worked for Jesus, so I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, it says, but before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. And so, out of that, now here's the principle: out of that, that you should have a specific time that you have set aside for prayer uh, and try to stick to that time as much as possible again life happens I know that I like us we got two busy kids and I know most people here got kids so that happens uh, but try try and have a specific time where that happened Jesus did uh, 
Number two, he had a specific place. You know, I have a designated place um, in, in our home where um, I go and pray. Um, and so if that's possible, have a designated place where there's um, no distractions and uh, none of those things. You know, I would suggest maybe not a TV be in that place, you know, but it is, if it is, it is. Uh, but but have, a, have a specific time and a specific place that you can go do that at. Uh, one of, and it's not all the time just in the house. One of the, one of the things I love doing um, is walking while I'm praying. I love doing that. Uh, really uh, in tune with, uh, with with nature, really in tune with God. So those are some of the things to do as well. And the third thing in in that that I got out of that, out of that outside of having a specific uh, time, a specific place, have a specific plan. It says that he got up in the morning, so he had a plan. He had a plan to do it. People make time for what people want to do. Amen. So if it's a priority for you, then um, we will we will make time for it. And again, if, if that's a challenge, you know what we need to do? Pray about it. Pray about God, I need to make this um, make this personal. I need to I need to I have a specific help me with a specific time, help me have a specific place, and help me have a specific plan like like uh about your about praying unto you. Yeah, like I know mine is not dark thirty, but it is in the morning time where I can get up, I can get the kids out the door, I'm by myself. And I can just enter in into just me and God. And, and that's my time. I know that's my time to talk to the king. So if you don't have a plan right now, a prayer plan, get you a plan, a time, a place, and a specific agenda. You know how you have your to-do list? Like have a list of things that you want to talk to God, like organize prayer, if you want to take it to that level. And when praying gets difficult sometimes, here, here's some, some things that happen. Number one, and we winding this down for y'all. Here's, here's some of the excuses we say. One, I can't concentrate. This is an excuse. I can't concentrate when I pray. So what are, what are we saying before you pray? Have a, what we just talked about a plan? Write down your plan. So that you know what you're supposed to be concentrating on, okay? So this is where you become strategic in getting it together in your prayer life. So here's the suggestion. Write down a plan when you know that you're scatterbrained. Some people are ADHD, right? And even in your prayer life, that, that's okay. Just if you can recognize that you're not a concentrated prayer person, then go to God with the prayer list. Like you got... One, two, three, the top three things you want to talk to God about, right? Number two. I don't feel like praying. <laughs> How many people feel like praying every day? <laughs> no, oh, okay. Nobody raised their hand. Dang. Yeah, wow. Um, you know, one of the things I always say, like, I say it like this, you know, um, it's just like uh, praising, it's just like praising God. Like, when, he, when you praise God, when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. And so this is one of those things too, as a, as a believer, as a believer, uh, prayer is not um, like, like not only a necessity, it's mandatory for, for the believer, it is. Amen. Like we should, like prayer should be, is a way of life for the believer. Like it is. And so if we're not, we're, you know, it's, it's like I say, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. And that's so true because it gets us focused. You know, I often see it like this prayer. Prayer gives um, heaven permission to get involved with our earthly affairs. Amen. And that's what it does Amen. because I'm praying unto yes. God that creates a connection. Yes. And it gives heaven permission to get involved with our earthly affairs because praying is a spiritual Discipline is what it is. And so we operate in that spiritual discipline. It gives heaven permission to get involved with our earthly affairs. There's an old saying that the more you have, the more you want. Right? We don't eat because we just want to. We eat 
because our bodies need to. If we don't eat at a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of time, our bodies will die, right? We just die. We don't pray because we feel like it. We pray because our spirit needs it. We pray because our relationship with God requires it. God didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray. So it is a requirement from the Father. The third thing, excuse that we make, praying seems like a chore. Anybody felt like, oh, man, I got to pray because I ain't did it yet. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't checked the list of golly. When prayer feels like a chore, write down a strategy again. Monday is going to be about praise. So you got to, when at this time the strategy is going to be your switch up game. Your switch up game, make it strong, right? So if prayer is like a chore, switch it up. Switch it up on them. Monday, my prayer life is going to be all about praise. Tuesday is all about Thanksgiving. Three is all about uh, uh, praying a scripture. I used to have and my, one of my favorite scriptures, blessed she who believes that what the Lord said to her will be accomplished. So I would pray about that scripture that I'm, thank you God for your word says, blessed is she. So I thank you that I'm blessed in this area. I'm blessed in that area. I'm blessed. So I would take a scripture and I would make it apply to my prayer life because I'm blessed. You see how that correlated? So you went from prayer one day, you went from Thanksgiving the next, you prayed scriptures on another day, then you inter interceded on the next intercession. It's just you praying for somebody else. Find somebody else to pray for. Then the next one, you listen. The next one, I mean, you see how we can switch it up and we don't have to make it like a chore, but we can, we can have specific strategies on certain days that we're not just doing the same thing over and over and over again, but we're, we're remixing it. Yeah, it's good. Number four, uh, we don't have time. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't talk about that one. So let's go to number five. I'm in a spiritual fall. Have ever you ever been in a spiritual fall where you just, man, like you just feel like you're praying and it, like it's this opposition that keeps you from praying and all kind of stuff like that. You know, um, I'm reminded of in the book of Daniel that it talked about that when Daniel prayed and you know says that's when we get to. 21 days of prayer fast from the angel come and tell us him that your prayer was answered on the first day first day on the first day but he didn't get the answer until like the 21st or the 22nd day like but he got the answer like on the first day but it was this opposing force uh that held things up and so that happens sometimes so what do we do that's a spiritual warfare. Like when it's like a fog, it's like you feeling like it's like a fight to pray. Like I'm not talking about you just tired of praying and you just, you know, you busy. And I, this is when you're in prayer and it's like a fight to get it. Like if you feel like something is opposing you. That's a spiritual warfare prayer. Like you have got, and a lot of times if you can speak in tongues, you need to go into the tongue realm. Because in that way, they're, they're, you're, you got to understand that you're fighting against principalities. You're fighting to get that prayer up because demonic forces are trying to stop it from getting to the kingdom. And so now you got to go into warfare mode. You got to begin speaking in tongues, uh, declaring that God, you, praise will, uh, uh, is a weapon of warfare. You got to shout to the mountaintop that the devil will not stop it. You know, these things because that's what that's where the fog is coming from. I'll be uh, uh, very transparent with this one this morning because uh, so uh, when I get up in the mornings, uh, the fir my first 30 minutes after I brush my teeth on his face, my first 30 minutes is focus prayer. First 30, every morning, focus prayer. Um, but this morning, this morning, I agree just because of everything that's going on for like, that's where I was this morning. For like the first five, six minutes, I'm like, oh my God, like, like, I, like, I was struggling. And like, literally, I, and, Doing that first five minutes, I told God, I said, God, I'm struggling. But I understood that it was a spiritual war because you have to understand, I said it earlier, prayer is a spiritual discipline. It's, that's a spiritual thing. I mean, like, it, it, it happens naturally, mm -hmm. but it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and you got to understand, when you begin to operate in the spiritual level, that things begin to happen. So so out of that 30 minutes this morning, my first five minutes was there. And I'm like, God, this, 
Like, and I told God, like, God, I said, this sucks. I did. Like, and I, but, but I was like, God, I'm struggling. But I stayed, like, uh, but, and that's what I did. I, I started praying my heavenly language. And, and as I got into it, it broke. Mm -hmm. And I got into that, that holy of holies. I got into the most holy place where the presence of God is. So that's what we have to do, especially because most of the time what happens is, we feel that we quit. Like, okay, God, this ain't working. Yeah, I'm, work. done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But you gotta understand, there's another level beyond that, and that's the level that we gotta get to. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna close this thing out. Y'all got something from it so far? Yeah. So far. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's six. We only have two more left. I haven't had the answer. Uh, one of the things that you have to remind yourself when you haven't had the answer and you've been praying for years <laughs> like me. That doesn't mean no, it means wait a lot of time. And you have to bring the scripture back. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as an eagle. They shall walk and not faint. When you feel like that's the problem, find that scripture and put it in your heart. And one of my other favorite scriptures that I had to remind myself from all the waiting years of waiting, that Luke 1 37, what I was waiting on was not impossible. Luke 1 37 says, for with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. So if you haven't had the answer, find you some scriptures that will empower you to keep holding on. And number seven is our last one. I always pray for the same people. I think, like, uh, I know for myself, as, as my prayer life has grown, then um, as, I'm, as I'm in prayer, God always, like, gives me who to pray for. And so sometimes it may be the same person, but the reality is I think, like, uh, as we enter in that, God will give us what to pray for and who to pray for. And I say, like, is this it's like seven and a half, eight billion people in this earth? Like, I'm sure, like, we could think of, like, like some different people to, to, to pray for. Pray for organizations. Pray for uh, churches. Uh, uh, churches. Pray for your leaders. How many of y'all have prayed for me daily? Uh, I'm just checking. Just checking. Amen. Okay, I got, okay, I, 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 I should be. But, but, but we should, man, God give us a whole list of things to pray about. And so, and, 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 hey, Often you should pray about what you should be praying about. Yeah, pray about what you should be praying about. And so uh, we have to understand that. But God will always give it to us what to pray for. If nothing else, it's 1186 chapters in the Bible, over 800,000 words, over I don't know how many verses, but begin to pray them. Pray scriptures, yeah. And then, and if nothing else, watch the news because the news will give you tons of stuff to pray for every single day. You'll be you'll be overwhelmed seeing all the stuff on the news that you could be praying for. Anybody in here been praying for Ukraine? Yes. Pray for Ukraine. Like right now, kids and women dying, left men, left and right. It's so much stuff that we can pray for. So if you find yourself saying, "I just repeat the same prayer for the same people." Find you some new people to pray for. Amen. Amen. Y'all received that on today? Amen.